Hello world, today I'm going to show you how to implement a search view in an activity with an expandable list. As an added bonus, I will also show you how to add icons to your list view and how to add a unique on-click event to each of the items in the list view. Let's begin. First we need to click on start a new Android Studio project. Then we give it a name, we'll call it search view expandable list view. Then we click on next. Set your minimum SDK to at least 15 and then click next. Choose a blank activity and then click next. Click on finish. Right click on the app folder. Select new Android resource file. Give it a file name called searchable. Change the resource type to XML. Then click on OK. Now we're going to need to change the text in this file. Instead of having a preference screen tag, we need it to have a searchable tag. We'll give it a label and a hint. It will also add the voice search node. After adding the label, hover your cursor over the label and hit Alt Enter. Click Create String Value Resource for App Label. Now give a value to the string that we are creating and click on OK. Also, do the same for the search hint. Hit Alt Enter. Click on Create String Value Resource and we'll give this a resource value of Search Me and click on OK. Now let's open our Android Manifest XML file. We need to insert a metadata tag that allows this application to be searchable. And we also need to add the same meta tag to our main activity to show that the searchable function is being implemented on that activity. Now we're going to need an icon that's going to display next to our items in the list view. You can use one of the ones that's included in Android Studio or you can make one of your own. In this case, I've made one of my own that we're going to use for this project. If you make your own icon, make sure you insert your icon under one of the subdirectories of MipMap. Right click on the layout directory and then select new layout resource file. Give this resource file a name called child row. We'll have the root element be a scroll view. Then we click on OK. Inside of the scroll view tag, make sure your layout width and your layout height are equal to match parent and then add a relative layout. Also for the relative layout, make sure the width and the height also match parent. Inside of the relative layout, we'll add an image view. We'll give it an ID called child icon. We'll align it to the left and the top, and the width and height will be wrap content. Below the image view, we'll add a text view, also with wrap content for the height and the width. Give it an ID called child text. Give it some padding from the left and the top. And for the layout, make sure it's laid out to the right of the child icon. Formatting the text will give it an appearance of text appearance medium. And whatever text you put here is just placeholder text. It will be replaced later. We just add it here so we can see it in the design view if you so choose. One more time, right click on layout, select new layout resource file, name this file parent row, and click on OK. The orientation needs to be vertical. The layout width will be fill parent, and we'll give it a height of 55 dp. Then we'll add a text view. The width and the height will wrap content, give it an ID of parent text, give it a little padding from the left. That way we'll have a little space for the collapse arrow. We'll also give this a text appearance of medium, but this will appear as a heading for the group, so we'll give it a text style of bold to differentiate it. Open content main. Now create an expandable list view. The width needs to match parent, the height can wrap content. We'll align it to the parent's left, and make sure you give it an ID, we'll call it expandable list view search. This is where your search results are going to be displayed. Then right click on your projects package in the Java directory. Select new Java class. We'll name this class child row. Click on OK. Create two private variables, an integer for the icon and a string for the text. Position your cursor below the private variables and hit Alt Insert. Select constructor. Highlight both of the variables and click on OK. Position the cursor below the constructor and hit Alt Insert. Select Getters and Setters. Highlight both of the variables and click on OK. Once again, right click on the package for your project. Select New Java Class. We'll call this class Parent Row. Click on OK. Give it two variables, a name of type string, and an array list that holds child rows. We'll call it Child List. Position the caret over array list and hit Alt Enter, import class, and then the error will go away. Position the caret below the variables, hit Alt Insert, select constructor, highlight both of the private variables and click on OK. Position the cursor below the constructor, hit Alt Insert, select getters and setters, highlight both of the variables and click OK. Once again, right click on the package for your project, select new Java class, call this class my expandable list adapter and click OK. 
Make sure your class extends base expandable list adapter. Position the carrot over base expandable list adapter and hit Alt Enter. Import class. And now you'll have a different error. You'll need to implement some methods for this. So with your carrot still on base expandable list adapter, hit Alt Enter. Click on Implement Methods. All of these should be highlighted. Click on OK. And now we need to fill out all 10 of these methods. Add three private variables. We'll need one for the context. We'll also need two array lists. Both hold parent row. One will be the parent row list and one will be the original list. Position the carrot over the data types of the private variables. Hit Alt Enter. Select Import Class. Do this for both the context and the array list. We'll need to define a constructor. In this case, the constructor will only take a context and the original list. We'll assign both of our array lists to the original list that was passed in to the constructor. Replace the return statement of the get group count function. We want it to return the parent row list size. Inside of get children count, we want to get the size of the child list of the parent row of the position that's being passed into the method. Inside of our get group function, we don't want to return null. We're going to want to return the parent list at the position specified. And similarly for the get child method, we're going to want to return the child list at the specified position of the parent list at the other specified position. In the get group ID method, we're just going to return the integer that was passed into the function. And likewise for the get child ID, return the child position. In has stable IDs, instead of returning false, we're going to return true. In get group view, we're going to change it so it's not returning null anymore. We want to return a view. So fill out the method as you see here. Get rid of the errors that you're seeing on the page with alt enter. And now for our get child view method. This is going to be rather complicated so we'll take it step by step. First, let's define a child row, and we'll get the child at the positions it's specified. If the view that was passed into the method is equal to null, we're going to need to inflate it. Then we need to assign an icon to our child view. Use Alt Enter to get rid of the error messages. And we'll also need to assign some text to our text view that appears in the child row. Define your text view as final, so that way we can add an event to it. In order to add an event to our text view, we're going to need to create a new variable called final convert view. The original convert view that was passed to the method will be assigned to this view and it will be instantiated as final. And in our example here, for our on-click listener for the child text, we're just going to use a toast. There's any number of things you can put here instead of a toast message. You can go to another activity. You can change the icon. You can add more text. Use your imagination here. As usual, use Alt-Enter to import classes and get rid of your error messages. And instead of returning null, we need to return convert view. In the method is child selectable, we're going to change false to true. Now we're going to add a method of our own, a public method called filter data, and it'll be passed a query string. Take the query string and reassign it to a lowercase version of itself. Clear out our parent row list. If the query is empty, we're going to add all of the original list to the parent row list. Otherwise, we need to cycle through each of the children in all the parent rows and search for the query string. If we find it, we add it to our parent row list. Then we need to call notify data set change at the end of our function. Open up the menu main.xml file in your menu resource directory. Add an item here with an ID of action search. We'll give it a default icon that comes with Android Studio, the IC launcher. The action view class must be android.widget.searchView. And for the show as action attribute, we'll have it set to if room or collapse action view. We'll also give it a title and we'll just call the string search. Position your cursor over the string search, hit Alt Enter, give it a value of search, and click on OK. Open up main activity.java. Import android.widget.search view. And this activity is going to need to implement a couple of methods. On query text listener and on close listener. Hit Alt Enter. Implement methods. Make sure all three methods are selected and click on OK. And your methods will be generated at the bottom of the file. Back up at the top of the file, we need to add some private variables. A search manager, a search view, an expandable list adapter, a couple of array lists, and a menu item. Inside of onCreate, we need to instantiate the search manager, the parent list, and show these parent lists. Then we'll add a couple of calls for two methods that haven't been defined yet, display list and expand all. Now create a private method called load data, and in here we're just passing icons and text to our child rows, and then adding them to a list of our parent rows. Then define the function expand all. Use a for loop to expand each of the groups that we have in our list. Also define display lists. We need to call the load data function we just wrote. Instantiate my list, the list adapter, and then we need to set the adapter for my list to have that list adapter that we just instantiated. 
in the OnCreate Options menu. We need to instantiate our search item and search view. This way, our search view appears in the action bar at the top of the screen. And we also need to implement our methods for when the user enters a query. Then fill out the onclose method, the onquery text submit method, and the onquery text change method, as you see here. And now your app should be ready to test. And that's all there is to it. I hope this is helpful. Thank you for watching.